Yes, I, I was invited um, to speak in a medical history session. Uh, medical history in uh, Bucharest is now being organized by Professor Octavian Buda, who has just recently become president of the European Association for the History of Medicine and Health, of which I'm chair of the scientific board. And he will organize a conference, a uh, European conference on medical history next September, September 2017. And he thought it would be uh, a good idea to, well, more or less take a test uh, this year and have medical historians from uh, Romania meet uh, me. <laughs> yes, that's a very good question. It's a question that has been asked and is always being asked because many people feel that history is rather irrelevant to medical practice today. But I think um, you can learn uh, from history because we have the luxury of looking at the past from uh, a comfortable distance. So uh, medical historians use the past as a social laboratory, you could say. Uh, not doing experiments on the past, of course, but we, we can look with the benefit of hindsight. We look at things happening in the 1930s or in the 19th century or whatever, and then uh, learn uh, what went well, what went wrong, and it's, it's basically about the um, interhuman relationships. It's about the ways in which people, patients and doctors and scientists make sense of disease. And um, the way they made sense of cholera in the 19th century very much resembles the way in which we now try to make sense of modern diseases that are new today. So for example, the way we responded to HIV AIDS when it was new, it was a new disease, um, scientists and the general public did not respond to it um, looking at it as a disease, uh, let's say a somatic, a biological, a medical event, but rather in a moral way, because the first HIV AIDS uh, patients were homosexuals, so they tended to treat, to, to look at uh, HIV AIDS as a punishment for wrong behavior. This has been happening in the past many times. Take leprosy in the Middle Ages, take the plague in the 16th, 17th century. Um, people did not, were not inclined to see it as an infectious disease that could be remedied, but uh, took it for a punishment coming from God for sinful behavior. So there are many parallels, I would say, um, in the way people respond to illness and disease. Uh, between past and present. So in, in that sense, I think we can learn from the past. So not in a one-on-one -on -one relationship, not like I'm standing next to a patient, uh, what should I do? Let's look it up, what they did in the Middle Ages. That is stupid, of course. But um, it is um, a way of composing yourself, a way of uh, behaving, a way you are uh, behaving as a professional, as a human being, towards your patients in this uh, society. So it, it, it's, um, it's a slow science, you could say. It changes your mental attitude. But I think it does change your attitude and it is very uh, useful. Of my field in the future? Uh, well, maybe we are now living in a digital age. So we have many digital sources and they tend to be evasive. So if they are lost, everything is lost. So all information carriers will be lost. Uh, and I just went to a conference in the United States where they devoted uh, a, a whole session to this uh, topic. Because if we lose or do not save our, um, our documents, we will lose our collective memory. So future historians will not have sources to build upon. I, I would say that's a, that's a, a major challenge. And then the other is maybe um, working on the way, working on our visibility. So your first question was, what's the relevance of medical history? That's a question that is asked very often. Many people fail to see what the relevance is because they think history is about uh, boring stuff like men discovering something about names and dates. To me, that is not history. 
it is a chronicle. It is saying this and then and then and then. That's not so history is trying to make sense of the past and tell a meaningful, coherent story about that past to the present. And I think we have a huge audience. Many, many people are very interested in history because people living in the 18th century are like us. They are very much like us. So what we like when we read good history, it is because we, we are reading a story about ourselves. It's about the human condition. It is about everything that happens between birth and death. And that is the same all the time. So things change. We discover things. We know we have improved our knowledge. In the Middle Ages, they lived until their 30s. Now we become 80. So that is a huge improvement. But apart from that, the way we live, the way we experience pain, uh, illness, disease, and death, that has not really changed very much. So I think the exciting thing about history is um, it is in a way the same and similar. We can relate to it because there are people like us and in another way it is strange. So the past has been called a foreign country. It is like we travel to another culture, another day and age and it's fascinating because it's strange and yet so familiar. Yes, well I would say, like I indicated yesterday, I was honored by um, an honoris causa degree, for which I'm very grateful. And one of the things I mentioned yesterday is very much along the lines uh, of Science in Transition, which is a movement I started in the Netherlands three years ago. And uh, I started together with the Dean of the Medical Faculty in Utrecht because we are very worried about what is happening today in science, in medical science, but in all sciences. Um, why are we worried? Because we think researching and publishing has become a goal in itself rather than a means to an end. So publishing is publishing in English in high impact journals, creating a high age index. And that is very understandable that people should be doing that because they want to further their careers. But it's not helping the patient and it's not helping society. So we should do uh, research that is relevant for the patient and for society. And we should make an effort collectively because it is a very, very complex problem. It is something very interrelated all over the world because everybody wants to publish in science and nature in the Lancet and the New England Journal forgetting about their patients right here in Bucharest so they should relate to patients in Romania and uh, also write in Romanian addressing Romanian patients rather than creating a, a career for themselves and for their field and for their research institute by publishing in high impact journals so basically, uh, the message I would give is try to get rid of the perverse incentives. It, so it's about uh, incentives and rewards that have been put in place in science, all sciences, but especially biomedical science. You are being um, rewarded to publish in um, high impact journals uh, rather than um, making an, an endeavor to help the patient and help your own uh, society. So I think we should rethink and change the rewards and incentives that have been put in place in uh, the sciences at large.